What is up? What's up, guys? We're back. Blake James in here. In the hour studio. We're sitting in a different part right now. It's like usually where I do my computer work. And this desk is a freaking mess. Just going to go there. Anyways, I was going to get tonight. Whoops. Let's see here. Okay, let's see here. Hopefully that fixes it. Might take a second. Audio issues, huh? There we go. Okay, Eric says there we go. So that's good. Sorry, guys. Okay, so somebody said they only got like every uh, every third word. Anyways, um, the point of what I was saying is tonight's stream is going to be a little bit shorter than maybe the typical stream, and I think it would be a fun day to do a little studio tour. I was planning to like clean my studio really well, which I love a very clean studio. It's not very clean right now, but... Um, that's okay. You guys can see the mess. Uh, so I'm going to take you on a tour. I actually tried to do, I was trying to do this from my phone, just from my phone. And uh, YouTube, uh, I got like an error message saying your channel doesn't meet the requirement. So I thought it was a thousand subscribers, but I guess maybe they've changed those. Uh, thank you, Eric, for the Beckett link super tight uh, even as of today when I checked earlier on Beckett.com homepage it was like still like the featured article on the homepage which is awesome and there was like 48 comments last time I looked which is super cool because now uh, it looks like we don't know for sure but I'm hearing oops gonna mute that I'm hearing that uh, we have a we have a good shot to get into the print issue which is awesome it wouldn't come out I think until the July issue and you know, with um, with print, that's pretty typical. That it's if you get into a print magazine, it's usually planned months ahead of time. So it's still super exciting, and it's good because like the story that they told, I think that Ryan Cracknell did like an amazing job. And you know, we talked for an hour, and then like he was able to like distill that into such a good, like succinct version of the story where I felt like he highlighted the things that are most important to me. Uh, also, especially like the shout outs to my parents was awesome. So that's good. 
Uh, if you haven't gone and read the article and you do, if you comment, that would be helpful. I think that we're going to get print, which would be very exciting for me. Uh, yeah, Jimmy, dude, Ben Baller went for 35K. Uh, just on, I think it was just under 35K, 34 and change. Amazing. I think the card is great. Obviously, the player is great. You know, Trout's going to be breaking records uh, with his card sales, I think, over and over again. I don't think that that Ben Baller card will be the biggest sale, the biggest print run from the series. That's just my guess. I don't know. Um... Anyway, so we're going to do a studio tour, and unfortunately, I was not able to just stream straight from my mobile device. So the way that I'm doing it is I'm using OBS, Open Broadcast Software. I am plugging, this This is my phone that you guys are looking at, but it's plugged into my computer, and, uh, and then I'm streaming through my computer. So what we're going to have to do is I'm going to have to like carry that laptop around, I guess, and then uh, you know I've got this, the phone will be on a tether. So I'm gonna like, we'll just go to certain sections of the studio and then we will um, we'll do a tour. And if you guys see anything, like I will try and stay on top of the comments. If you guys see something like, you know, the corner of an art piece sticking out of a stack and you wanna like me to show it to you, I can pull any of that stuff out. So like I said, here where we're at right now is basically it's just a desk that I had built into, into the corner here. So it's really wide, which I love. It's also very, very messy right now. So it's nice I have a coffee machine yep, there. <laughs> coffee machine. Uh, down below here, I have the refrigerator, which is very important. And I have, sorry that it's, there's a microwave right there. Sorry, that's gonna be like, <laughs> really, really uh, nauseating maybe to watch. I will try to like point at a few things and then I will um, put you down. I have, I have it on like a tiny tripod. Other thing that's over here that's really cool is I guess we might as well start this tour. Okay, so I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna try to uh, try to hold it as steady as I can for you guys. Uh, we'll just, we're just gonna go around the studio in this direction. So here I have a large format printer. It's got a bunch of crap on it right now. But uh, it's nice because I can print all my own stencils. And what I used to do in California, when I, ha I have an art studio at my parents' house, I think my dad's on here, he sure is. Uh, so when I would do art there, I had to go to uh, the local FedEx, which is like a 15, 20 minute drive. And then I'd be having my images to print out for my stencils on a thumb drive. And I'm paying, you know, I was paying 75 cents a square foot. So it's, it adds up a lot. So I, when I set up this studio here in New York, I decided to invest in a printer and I think it was like, I don't know, probably about a thousand dollars, but I've been using it for a year and a half now and it definitely, definitely saved me money, which is cool. Okay, so that's, so that's the printer. There's also this funny, I think that art, uh, there's this guy named Tarciso. He's another artist, he's from Brazil and he came and he was working uh, out of my studio. It's like a studio mate for a short time. And that was the thing that he like found on the street and then turned into art. Uh, and then we have here, let's see here. I don't know what the best way to show it is. Maybe just like this. So I have like a futon, which uh, is great because if I'm here late and I need to crash here, I can. And then I also have like some good reading material over there. I'll show you guys some of the books because I think those are fun. So I have a bunch of different books that I like to look through. So this is a Basquiat, and I think this one's like the children's book, right? Kind of. Yeah, so that's fun to read. Basquiat's one of my favorite artists. Also notice that crown tattoo that I have and that are the same thing. Uh, oh yeah, there's another Basquiat book. So I have like a lot of like Basquiat and Warhol books uh, that I like to look through just to get inspired. And then I also have a bunch of these Dr. Seuss books. I love Dr. Seuss. I think he's a, a brilliant artist and a brilliant brand builder. Uh, also, I hope someday to make a children's book and it would be like my style of kind of graffiti-ish art, but it would be a fun children's book and I'd want to make something that was fun for the parents too. So 
that is inspiration there. And then also sometimes I'll have, you know, friends will come over to the studio and they will bring their kids so that their kids can like paint and stuff. But the kids attending fans, uh, you know, they appreciate that. They'll, they'll read those books too, which is awesome. Okay, so here you can see like, again, this is a mess right now, tripod. And then there's like those two softbox lights. So like usually what I'll do on this wall, which is completely white, it's the only like completely white wall in the building or in this room, sorry, is that is where I'll photograph my work once it's finished. So I will either, uh, I'll hang it up there. I'll put, you know, camera on a tripod on a timer, light it and take those photos. So like all the photos that you've seen of, well, like the tops cards themselves after I finish painting them, uh, I'll photograph them right there and then I pull it into Photoshop and I make it into a baseball card. And then we have, so over here, we'll, we'll walk over here now. Let's see here. So you guys know that is the living canvas to go with Project 2020. I'm painting on that a lot lately. Okay, so here, this is where you guys usually see me and this is just a smaller desk. Right now we have stacks and stacks of the Nolan Ryans, which I need to sign and get ready to send out those artist autograph cards. So this is just a, a pretty small desk. I actually inherited this from another artist that was in the building and she moved out. And so she was getting rid of a few things. So like the reason that I have two couches is because she had a little sofa. And so I got that too. And then she also gave me this desk. So I will, this is like a shorter desk than my, than the one that you saw me start at. And uh, I'll do some computer work here sometimes. And also I will do my box breaks here and open up some baseball cards. And like now we'll be kind of, these are all like the, uh, uh, the little tops to the box, to, to the little card packets that I'm gonna be painting on for the custom autograph cards as well. So this is a fun, like, I don't know, it's just nice to like get a change of scenery. So I have a few different places that I can work in the, in the space and a few different, um, you know, desk heights and things. And if I have other people come over, which I don't right now during the quarantine, but normally uh, it's not uncommon for another artist to come and hang out or work. And so having like a second computer desk is helpful for that. And then also if, you know, if we work late and someone needs to crash here, we have two couches, which is also cool. Okay, so now we'll go over here. So here we have, this is where I do other photography stuff. So I've got like a bunch of these colored seamless paper rolls and then I have more here a ton of different colors and I will do some photography stuff um, sometimes I'll do photography freelance for brands and sometimes I'm just doing it for fun but that is where like I can roll down and I can get a full you know color single color seamless backdrop um, and I can shoot this painting up here is really cool I, that means a lot to me um, it's a guy named Raekwon Alexander. He's one of the captains of the Miami Dolphins. And I painted him in December when I went to Miami for Art Basel. And, for, and then I went back again for the Super Bowl. But for Art Basel, I wanted to paint um, a handful of different Miami athletes. So I did like a Dwayne Wade, which I was able to give to Dwayne. Um, and then I did this one. I did a Dan Marino that I ended up giving to the Miami Dolphins. Uh, it's like hanging in the stadium which is awesome. Uh, anyways, so this thing, so I invited him, I met him because his agent uh, is a friend of mine and like I've done some work for some of her clients. And so I asked her, I said, hey, I need some Miami athletes, do you rep any? And she said, oh yeah, Raekwon's awesome, you gotta meet him, he's such a nice guy. So I had, he actually came to the art show where I like debuted that piece and then he signed it in the corner down there. Um, he signed it and we took a picture together. And originally I told him, hey, if you come to this event, I'll give you the painting for free. Um, you know, I'd just love for you to be there and get a photo. And he signed one and he said, well, why don't you keep that one that I signed and then just make me something else. So that, um, I like that. And then this other one here down here is really cool. I'll show you, we'll get a little closer. So this one, it's a guy named Marcus Epps. He plays on the Eagles. Philadelphia Eagles. He's a safety. I think it was just his first year last year, but it's got like diamond dust on it. And so it's very sparkly. So I think it'll be fun. Like later in the tops, we'll sit here right now. Also, this is a table that you guys have seen me use a lot to live stream. This is one of my painting tables. 
Uh, I do a lot of my spray paint here because it's very close to like the window. So I have my, uh, that exhaust fan right now, it's got a plastic bag over it to keep the cool breeze out. But um, I like to paint. I do a lot of my spray paint stuff right here at this table because it is close to the window. And that is the safe way to do it. Um, anyways, so the Marcus Epps painting right there. Uh, I paint, he had me do it at the very end of last season. And then he asked, because he was doing a lot of traveling, which he's probably not now, but um, a lot of times the players will take time off in between seasons and they'll like travel the world and not be home. And so he asked for me to just hold on to it until he was like settled in back at home and wanted me to ship it. And then all this quarantine stuff happened and he's probably, uh, I don't know, I gotta reach out to him. Anyways, uh, okay, now let's see. I'll also, I wanna show you guys this too. This is pretty rad, I think. So I guess I will put, I don't know where the best place is. Let's put it down here for a second. So let's see here. If I go like this. So, let's sit on the floor. So what I really like uh, about the studio is everything, everything is on wheels. So you see like there's like little locking wheels down there, locking casters. Um, I have two big tables. They're eight feet by four feet. I had them custom built and um, I met this awesome dude that is a, like a carpenter here in New York when I moved here and he has a wood shop near the Navy Yard in Brooklyn and they end up with like basically like what it's made of this it's a really hard wood that has kind of a textured surface it was made for like um, what is it called like the runways for New York Fashion Week with all the toppers for that so it's like almost like non-slip but it's also like very 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 hard um, it's heavy, but it's also very hard wood. And um, they were throwing away a bunch of that wood, so he was able to like get it for free. So like he, when I say I had a custom table built, it still cost less than like what I would have paid for like a table from Ikea. Or, well, maybe not Ikea, but you get the idea. Anyways, uh, I had him put everything on locking casters, and so the whole studio is very mobile or modular. For the most part, the way it's set up now is the way it's usually set up. And I like it like this, but sometimes for certain projects, I can roll the tables out. I could put them together, you know, this way to make a long table. I could put them this way and make a huge, if I had like a very big piece, I wanted to work on top of the table. Or as you guys have seen, I do a lot of painting here on the floor. And so then I'll just, I can move the tables out of the way. Uh, these, if you see, are basically all full of different stencils. So this was one of the King Griffey, King Griffey Jr. stencils. And they are, I gotta go through and organize them a little bit, but this whole bottom one, these are all 20, projects 20 stencils. These, I forget what this is. Okay, so this is like, here's a Michael Jackson stencil. Um, let me show you guys, MJ. So, they're pretty well organized. So I have two of these. There's one in, in front of the other desk, uh, or below the other table. And they were very, those things are not cheap at all. Uh, and But they're awesome. They're also very heavy, so when, whenever I move, it'll be a pain in the butt. But that's okay. Um, I try to keep all my stencils very organized. So, like, because sometimes I will get a request for a painting from a, an existing stencil, which is not something I always offer, depending on how, you know, if, uh, you know, if someone commissioned a picture of them and their girlfriend and then someone else wanted to buy it, I'd tell them no. But if someone, you know, like that Michael Jackson stencil, for example, I did that painting, uh, that painting sold, and if somebody else wanted a Michael Jackson, I'd say, well, I have this stencil. So if you wanted me to do this one, I could do it a little cheaper than doing a brand new stencil. And so I have, you know, about, I do about 200 paintings a year, and each painting usually has two stencil layers, so that means there's 400 stencil layers. And so it's important that like if somebody wants to like pay me money and me to have that Michael Jackson stencil like easy to access, it's important to have it all organized. So for the most part, it's like organized by sport. So like I have a whole uh, drawer that is for um, the Topps Project 2020. I have another one that's all basketball players. I have another one that's all football players and football because I've done so many of them, I have like three different drawers and I have it by like, you know, timeline. So it's like a six month period, I'll fill the drawer and then I'll go to the next one. 
Um, so that's cool. So it's tough with this. I can't really see. Let's see here. I'll move back up here for a second. Okay. Yes, pretty sweet setup. So Matthew asks, how far is the studio from where I live? So if I, um, if I take the subway, which when the world is not crazy is usually what I do, it takes me about 30 minutes. And it's like, and most of that is actually walking to and from the subway stations. So like, it's like a five to 10 minute walk from my apartment to the subway. And then it's like 10 minutes on the subway. And then it's another five, 10 minute walk here to the studio. Uh, lately with the COVID stuff um, and because the uh, subway has been very, very reduced hours. They're not running it at night anymore. And even during the day, it doesn't run a lot. So I've been taking Ubers and there's also not a lot of cars on the road. So I, when I go back and forth, you know, even if it's late at night, if we're driving in an Uber, I can get home in like 10 or 15 minutes, which is great. It's very fast. Um, let's see, uh, Aaron sports card. I noticed that the signed cards don't have the same authentication step that all other tops autograph cards have. Do you know why they decided to go that way? So the, uh, the custom sticker that us artists are replacing this one with is not coming from tops. It's coming from each of our, uh, each of us artists. Fortunately, we're all doing something pretty similar, but they are all different and we're getting them from different people. Mine I'm getting from a very like high end tamper evident company. And, uh, like it's got like the hologram or like prism design, I think they call it or whatever. And like, basically if you peel it off and by the way, I'm going to be taking all these off. So it doesn't really matter if I take one off now, cause I'll show you like the difference. We'll see here if I can get this. I don't have enough fingernails. Okay. So this is the top sticker. And I was able to peel it off and I really kind of peeled it like crazy, but it's like, it's still intact. I, I messed up the corner a little bit, but like if I was really careful, I could pretty much take this off and keep it in pristine condition. And then I could put it back on. Now with my stickers, they are tamper evident. And if you take them off, there's a few layers and the layers will separate and you won't, you can't put it back on. Uh, and it should allegedly be like, you know, hard to forge. So I'm trying to take extra steps to make sure that my stuff is, uh, you know, people know it's authentic. Uh, I'm also going to have certificates of authenticity, which I need to print those uh, ASAP because I'm going to be sending those with my cards too. And again, that's just something that I'm doing, not necessarily tops, um, but the other artists are kind of following suit. We're all doing a very similar style. Okay, let's go over here. So we have this, like, this is the top of that big table. So it's, it's a really large table. It's a huge, awesome workspace. Also check this out. This is beautiful. This is going to uh, RJ Hinners. Hopefully I'm saying his name right. Just got the frame in this week. And so I need to mount that in there. And then I'm shipping that out. Uh, let's see here. So we can go like this. And we'll go here. Okay, so you guys also saw when I cut stencils, so that is another, this table, the whole table is the, another eight foot table. I've got these, uh, these lights that I'll plug in. Um, so I have like a lot of light. This is important when I'm cutting, I have a lot of light, which is great. That's pretty much where I do all my cutting. Um, also check these out, these are beautiful. These are the cardboard uh, APs that I made. They're like, they're all totally original, but um, I'm calling them APs and it's an addition of nine, but they're all very different. I got the frames in for these, so I need to photograph these now. If you go to my website, you'll just see pictures of these, of just the cardboard. Doesn't, doesn't do it justice to like what they look like when they're framed, which is cool. There are a few of those left, by the way. And then this one is sold. I need to nail that. But um, I'm waiting. That one, I believe, I think is going to Twins Jake, if I recall correctly. And uh, I'm waiting because I have a few other things that I'm sending him, cards that haven't arrived yet. So we're going to send 
uh, in a whole in a whole care package. So then we have here is kind of my canvas storage uh, area. So like these are all tops. And we have the artist, um, the reference card. So they're blank on the back. They're 130 point. And we got, I got eight of each of these. And um, so I put them in one touch cases because I think that they're really cool and also potentially rare. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with them yet. I've had a lot of people ask if they can buy them or have them. And the short answer is no. Um, I might give some out to like, I don't know, I've had so many, so much support from some, some people and, and I think like those people will definitely be at first in line to, to get something. And then I would like to keep a couple for my personal collection. Um, let's see. Lauren, you are very important. You are very, very important. Um, let's see here. What else do we have? Uh, early 90s b-ball dream would be sick. Yes, very, very cool. Uh, so over here we have canvas storage, like I mentioned. So this was actually fun. These are photographs that uh, my photographer friend Brian took, and I had them printed on canvas so that I can paint on top of them, and it'll be like a collab. Uh, let's see here. So we have here, this is also cool. I like this, uh, I have like a whole series of Felix paintings. Yeah. And that's one of them. Go. So I'm probably not gonna pull out all of those. I do wanna show some of them to you. Um, I guess I'll just start grabbing a couple. Okay, so this, this is Ray Lewis. I've gotta send this to him. Um, he, we are doing some stuff with charity that he's involved with where I have two of these. I'm going to give one to him and then I'm going to have one that's going to be sold for charity of his. Okay. Let's get this stuff out of the way. Oh, let's see here. Trying to get some variety here. Okay. Here we go. So, Megan Rapino. I did this just because when they won the World Cup. They're awesome. I think she's awesome. I actually would like to give this one to her. I haven't gotten in touch with her yet. Um, I need to do that. Hopefully connections through like this top thing will help me reach some of those. Uh, some of those ones. Oh, let's see here. We have this. This was a collaborative piece uh, between uh, this artist. Her name is Natalia. She goes by Lick Me, L-I-K-M-I. Uh, she is from Colombia, and uh, she was visiting in New York, and we did a collaboration here in the studio. And so this photograph was taken by Brian, my photographer, and then I took it and made it a stencil. And so I painted her portrait, and then she did a lot of the other stuff, you know, these little characters that she paints, which is really cool. So here, let's see here. Okay, here's another cool one painting I did a while ago that um, I brought to, I actually did this in California, but I brought it here because uh, uh, there was an art show and I wanted to put it in. So that's why it's here. Oh, let's see. Uh, I think that's pretty good. It's a good variety. Then I have like some smaller works and works in progress and stuff here. Uh, some of my tops like the little mini Donnies. This one made it on the actual card. These ones uh, did not. I'm gonna frame those two. Okay, and then I have this. Actually, this is kind of fun. So, I do a ton of uh, audio books, as you know. So this is from Audible. And this book, uh, which was called, what was it called? It was called The 64th Man, starred John Cena. He was like the main character, uh, and he narrated the book. And it was about, uh, it was a fun book, and I really liked it. And I tweeted to them about it, and they said, hey, we're going to send you something fun. So they sent me this, like, punching bag. 
which uh, also kids that come over here love. Um, anyways, here we go. And then let's see here. The last thing. Well, it's kind of there's not really that much to see, but so I have my shelving here. So behind that suitcase, I've got like kind of a stuff for like a complete wood shop basically. So I have a table saw, chop saw, jigsaw, skill saw, everything. Um, and I keep it over there mostly because I don't I don't use it every day. But every once in a while, when I'm doing like some really big pieces of art, sometimes I will make my own uh, make my own frames. And so I will have like also have wood over there, so I can um, build stuff. So I like to build stuff too. As you guys know, you saw with the link. So that's pretty much it. Then that takes us back around, and then we're back at that first messy desk that we started at. By the way, I love those two big abstracts. They're some of my favorite pieces. One's, that one, orange one's called Over the Couch. Blue one is called Blue Monday. And they are technically for sale, but I put high price, tag, price tags on them because I love them and I'm attached to them. So if they sold, it would be hard to get rid of them, but that would be okay. Oh, and then also, actually, this is really cool. So all of these cabinets are all painted by different artists that I have collaborated with in some way or another. So like over on the right, that is Natalia uh, Lick Me that you saw. Um, uh, this is a guy named Forrest uh, who used to have a studio here in the building. Uh, this is a artist, also Colombian artist, named Marcello Castellani. His work is freaking amazing. Uh, this piece here is, uh, it's actually a piece on like a wood shingle that that Brazilian artist Tarciso did. Uh, this is an artist named James Fisher Smith. James used to share a studio with Forrest, uh, and I love, he's got awesome work. Very, very cool work. And then this was done by a lady named Courtney Van Luren. She was my studio assistant when I first moved to New York for a long time. She's also a teacher and enjoys uh, enjoys art a lot. And she, she was like an assistant teacher, and then the main teacher, I think, went on maternity leave, so she got like upgraded, so then she stopped coming in and helping me out in the studio, but she really was helpful in the first like six months that I was here and setting up the studio. She helped me set a lot of it up. So she got the first cabinet, which is super cool. And I'll show you guys this. Let's see here. It's gonna be kind of hard to tell, but if it opens and then, oh God, I don't know if I can show you. So it's a full face, like it's a, it's a full face, if that makes sense. I don't know. Hard to, it's really hard to see with the shelf right there. Oh, and then I guess we didn't really cover this part either. Hold on. So here we have all the tools. So I like to try and keep my paints as organized as possible. There's a couple that are out of place right now that is a little bit annoying, but is what it is. And then I have all my tools, you know, brushes, uh, some acrylic paints. I love using these little paint scraper spatula things hair dryer, scissors, um, everything has its place. And then I've got like, let's see here. So I have like hammers, nail gun. It's a nice little, uh, little workshop set up. Uh, oh yeah, and then here behind this easel, see here I have all my, so I have all my tapes, my masks, everything, more brushes. Like I said, everything has a place, which is awesome. All right, well, I think, I think that pretty much sums it up. Thank you guys for uh, joining tonight. I know it's a lot shorter stream than we usually do. And I also, because I was like looking at my phone where the comments are not, I didn't necessarily see all of the, uh, all the comments. I will like, I'll watch back. I'm gonna watch the, uh, the episode. I like to like critique myself and I will check out all the comments. And if there's any questions that I didn't answer, um, then I can, uh, I don't know, respond in the comments or uh, reach out to you or you can reach out to me or whatever. But that's pretty much it. Um, I'm excited for May, dry May. It's going to be good. I've got, uh, I've got some ideas and goals that I want to share with you guys in the next probably coming days. Uh, I'll be super, uh, it'll be good for accountability, right? If I tell you guys what I'm hoping to get done this month and then you guys can help, uh, help me stay motivated and watch my process or call me out if I'm slipping but thank you guys so much uh, definitely stay awesome and uh, if you haven't already 
make sure to subscribe here on YouTube. And if you want to support my art or see more of my art, you can do that at proathleteportraits.com. I'm Blake Jameson. I'm out. Stay awesome.